Chris Lee and Blake Lovell of Southeastern 14 here to predict SEC basketball games for Saturday, January the 21st. We're doing this Thursday morning, so we've got no lines. But what we do have is four computers, Ken Pomeroy, Bart Torvik, BPI, Jeff Sagarin. We average those with home court advantage to give you sort of an estimated line, and then we'll give you a probability of victory uh, between Pomeroy, Torvik, and BPI. Let's start an order of tip-off. Ole Miss visits Arkansas at 11 Central. All times will be Central on ESPN2. Arkansas, a 10.8 point favorite, according to the computers, with an 84% chance to win. Arkansas looked better in defeat at Missouri. I think had 19 players foul out in that game and still almost won. Ole Miss just struggles to score. Arkansas seemed to get better on the defensive end in Columbia the other night. I just don't know that Ole Miss has got enough firepower to keep up with Arkansas, uh, especially with the Rebels playing on the road. Yep. I think Arkansas has got to win one at some point, and I think this is it. Um, it's kind of been the one – I don't know. You feel like it's kind of the one you're waiting on because maybe this is a chance to sort of just, you know, really, you know, just – get a big win here. And, and I think, you know, big in the sense that just playing well and taking care of business, because as we said, I mean, three of those games were wound up being double figures. They lost by, and you know, lose the Missouri game in a close one where they were up double digits with five minutes, six minutes to go. So this, as I said before, and you know, the previous video, this is kind of the chance for Arkansas, I think to start a run here, get LSU at home after that, A&M at home after that. I'm talking just SEC games. They got to go to Baylor in there, but, um, you know, at South Carolina, all winnable games, but it starts here and you kind of have to take it one game at a time. But I feel like that's what they've done over the years with Muss is look, we've seen this team just go on these big winning streaks after slow starts. And I can't say that I would be that shocked if that's something that could happen here with this team. Although I think there are more, limitations just based on, you know, as we talked about before, not having two of your best players, but um, still, I think that this is just a good spot to, to get a big win. And as we said, with Ole Miss, it just, they won in South Carolina. Maybe that gives you a little bit of something, but I just still think Ole Miss offensively just probably does not have enough of a, a boost here to, to be able to go on the road and, and win against Arkansas who played, I thought a lot better defensively for the most part against Missouri, if they can keep that up here, I think this is a, a game where Arkansas can kind of dictate how this game is played and, and should get a victory. Okay, Vanderbilt travels to Georgia. Noon start time on the SEC Network. Georgia, by the computers that we use, a 4.2-point favorite with a 66% chance to win. Georgia has been playing really solid basketball under Mike White, his – Got some offensive weapons. Vanderbilt, if you do not know, is without Liam Robbins for at least four more weeks and maybe six, maybe even more. With a foot injury, Robbins is hands down Vanderbilt's best player, and I think the Commodores are going to have trouble winning in Athens with that being the situation. Yeah, I mean, I think they'd have trouble winning even if they had him because I just think Georgia's, as we've said, I think they're – they're just an improved team. And I mean, really, if not for an Oscar Shibway, Oscar Shibway game, you know, it's like, I mean, Georgia's got a chance to win that against Kentucky, but I mean, the way Kentucky just kind of stormed back and the way Shibway plays just could not be stopped. And, um, you know, I think Liam Robbins is good, but he's not, you know, I think giving that type of performance. And so I thought Georgia still some good takeaways from that game against Kentucky, but, now back at home, I've said it again, you know, multiple times now. To get back to where you want to be in the SEC, you got to win your home games, and Georgia's done that so far. You know, they they beat Auburn at home, they beat Mississippi State at home. Now they get a Vanderbilt team that let's just, you know, I feel like we can just put this on loop, even without Liam Robbins, it's going to be close. <laughs> I mean, it's just it's the way yeah. it is. So it'll be, it should be a close game, but yeah, I just I think Georgia's the kind of team that. So far, we've kind of seen a reignited home atmosphere in some of these big SEC games. And, you know, I would expect more of the same here. I think that it's just a team that is playing with a lot more confidence, as we've said. And even in the road games they've lost, they've not looked bad. And 
I think that there's a lot of upside here with this Georgia team. I, I do believe Vanderbilt defensively can probably do some things to, you know, cause some issues a bit, but at the same time, I mean, I just, I look at Georgia and I feel like they're hard to bank against at home. So I will, I will take the dogs here in this one. The next one up. And again, we do these in order of tip off in my mind, the most interesting game of the day. This is one central on ESPN, Texas A&M, one of two unbeaten teams in league play travels to Kentucky Computers have Kentucky as a 3.7 point favorite with a 65% chance to win. Now we have talked about this before. The computers are all over the place on Kentucky. This this is a pretty massive range of potential outcomes here. Uh, Bart Torvik has Kentucky less than a one point favorite. BPI has Kentucky nearly an eight point favorite. I think Torvik's got Kentucky maybe in the 70s. Uh, and again, I don't think the computers throw out the computers on Kentucky right now because the cats are maybe figuring it out uh, with the change at point guard, Xavier Wheeler taking more of a back seat. Kentucky's also had some injuries of late. And maybe you can throw out the computers on AM too, because AM is doing what it does under Buzz Williams, which is underwhelm you in the non conference portion of the schedule and then play its best ball when the page turns to the SEC. AM has won a couple of road games here. Uh, it won at Florida, won at South Carolina. Uh, of course, Kentucky was beaten at home by South Carolina a couple weeks ago. That is a long-winded preamble to say, Blake, that there are a lot of potential outcomes, I think, in this game. Yeah, I think so. I mean, it's I mean, easily one of the most unpredictable games of the weekend, I think, if not the most unpredictable game, just given all the elements involved. Um, yeah, I mean, this is, as we talked about, I mean, AM's schedule has not been the most difficult to start SEC play, but they've won every game, including two road games, Florida and South Carolina. Obviously a bit of a difference there. Um, but, you know, this Kentucky team, as I said, even against Georgia, right? Like they needed a an out-of-this-world performance from, from Oscar Shibway, which he's capable of, um, you know, to, to be able to, to win a game like that. And we've also talked about kind of the changing rotation for – for the cats, um, you know, severe Wheeler, maybe not, you know, in that spot that now case and Wallace is in. And I think, you know, you've said it and I've said it, it's just kind of, I think that's the best course forward for Kentucky just to kind of move along and, and keep case and Wallace as kind of that primary guy at the point, because I think just things seem to flow a little bit better, or at least they're trying some different things offensively that helps to flow a little bit better. Uh, and I mean, I, this is, I mean, this is one of those games like AM, as we said, has gotten so much better on defense. And that worries me a little bit for Kentucky because, yeah. you know, I think that just knowing that AM's playing better on that side of the floor than they were a month ago, that's not great because, you know, that is a team that I think can, can, can frustrate you. And I think that's we've seen with Kentucky before, right? Teams that can really frustrate you. Uh, with how they play, you know, the aggressive type of style, that can be a problem. But we saw Kentucky handle that against Tennessee. As I said, they sort of got smacked in the mouth, got back up, took care of business. Uh, I think there will be some similarities between that game and this game. And it's just, I don't know, because I feel like this is, this is the first time we've seen A&M in this spot this season, right? Like a, yeah. a road game against a, and again, they played at Florida, but I think this is kind of just a, it's such a different test. And I think it's just because Kentucky for some people, and, and I don't know if I'm fully there yet, but like it maybe turned the corner here matchup wise, you know, it's like you've got two good rebounding teams here in terms of like the ability to get second chance opportunities, which is kind of a theme in the sec. We always talk about that, but I think the key to this game is I'm curious to see what AM does defensively because buzz is a very good game planning coach. I'm curious to see what they do to, you know, to counter an Oscar Shibway and how seeing, how about this? Seeing with Casey and Wallace in the primary point position, what are some of the things AM can do defensively 
to kind of counter that and especially try to figure out what to do with Shibway, right? Um, I think that's an interesting kind of element to this. And I'm trying to see, let's see, if we go back to last season, Shibway had eight points, 14 rebounds, three blocks, three steals, three fouls, and 32 minutes against A&M last year. Um, and that so, you would know, have been I mean, with Henry Coleman playing at A&M, who's, of course, back this year, too. Yeah, and Coleman had a good game. He had 17 points, eight rebounds, um, played 33 minutes. They just didn't get a lot of production outside of him, and I think that was the problem in that game last year. It was a 64-58 game. So, you know, I'm sure they can look back and see some of the things, different teams, but you can see some things you did well last year against Shibway, um, you know, to kind of try to figure out the best you know, way to, to stop this guy because that was statistically, I guess, one of his worst games last year, but boy, that's still not a, a terrible stat line. So, um, yeah, so I, I think, boy, I don't know if you have a great feel about this one. I don't. I just think it's – I'm probably going to pick Kentucky just because I, I don't think anyone's surprised by that. They're the home team. Um, if this game was in College Station, as I always say, I'd pick a and I just think that's what I would do, but – it's at Rupp. I tend to think Kentucky's turned the corner, but I also, in the back of my mind, look at this and feel like a and is the kind of team that can really frustrate Kentucky with how they play. And mm, I don't know. I'll pick Kentucky, though. Yeah, I just think odds are Kentucky gets it together. I mean, I've, they have just been maddening, <laughs> extending back to last year's NCAA tournament. Um, but – when in doubt, you sort of bet on the talent and the coaching pedigree, and that, that well, Kentucky fans are probably going to lose their minds over the over the last one. But you know, this H- history is says too. right. Yeah, and this is a game too. I think it's like I think this is an Antonio Reeves, C.J. Frederick type game where like they got to hit some shots in this one. I feel yeah. like because I don't think A and M is going to make it easy at the rim, and they're not going to make it easy in terms of driving. and And remember too, I we I need to look up the stat again because I'm sure it hasn't changed. Uh, but something to keep in mind, and we've talked about this with A&M this season. Um, yeah, they're still second. So they still rank second nationally in free throw attempts, 26, 26 a game. So it's like going on the road. I think you kind of know where I'm going here. Are you going to get those same opportunities um, to kind of help you scoring wise? And I think that's something to really look at as well, because did, they're did, getting, did, did, did they get the crew that was in Columbia? Well, if they do, then they're in good shape because <laughs> They'll be at the line 50 <laughs> times in this one. But right. that is something else to keep in mind. They do rely a lot on getting to the free throw line. So if you're not getting some calls, if Kentucky's defending well, not giving you those same chances, and because you do have an Oscar Shibwe in there, that's also something to look at with AM here and wonder if they get those same those same opportunities because that's a big part of their offense um, is getting to the free throw line. So we're going Kentucky, right? I think I would lean Kentucky. But yeah, hey, if if A and M wins, they just keep doing it, right? They just keep proving the doubters wrong. So, four more games to discuss. But first, betting eleven dollars to win ten stinks with Bro Throw. You bet ten to win ten. It lets you bet on all fifty states. It is not the house, so betters have a fair chance at winning. It does not take a cut of every bet. I think it's the only sports platform that does that. No need to deposit money, no minimum bets, no need to connect your bank account. Betters pay each other directly. It's a hassle-free sign-up process that gets you into action in seconds. Go to brothrow.com forward slash SE14. Get in today, and once you're there, ask to join our private group. Southeastern 14 will let you in. Auburn visits South Carolina. 2.30 tip-off SEC Network. Computers have... Auburn is about a 14.3 point road favorite with a 91% chance to win. I don't think we're going to spend a lot of time on this. We've talked about how awful Carolina is, but let's not forget there have been times uh, they've beaten Clemson, which I think leads the ACC. That was back November 11th. And of course the game in Rupp arena, which was an anomaly is that was the only win for Carolina in a five-game stretch. Auburn playing very well, defending very well. Uh, this could be a game where Carolina might have trouble getting above 55 or so, and Auburn, I think, has got plenty of firepower. Even though it's not executing at a tremendous offensive clip, 
uh, still plenty en- enough talent there for, for Auburn to take care of business, I think, with ease. Yeah, I mean, it's like we can say like South Carolina's had these spots this year, but it's like how come, how on earth could you possibly predict where they're going to come from? You know, it's like <laughs> they beat South Carolina State by three to open the season, right? South Carolina State, by the way, is three and 16. And then they turn around and beat Clemson, who's been in the top 25 routinely by two the next game. So it's like, how could you have predicted that result right after the first game? Yeah. But then it's like, well, you lose by home, lose at home by 43 to Tennessee. How could you possibly predict that they're going to beat Kentucky on the road? And so it's the same instance here. How could I possibly predict that they're going to win this game, not knowing what I'm going to get from South Carolina at all? And so I, yes. I, I'm guessing there's never a team in the history of basketball that is sandwiched 40 point losses around a win at Rupp Arena. No, and I think we we kind of said that it's um yeah, I mean it's one of those that I, I think it's just kind of it was unprecedented. It felt like it just, I mean it felt like you'd never seen that before. Uh so yeah, I, Auburn's the pick here. I you know, if you're looking at it just from a matchup standpoint, I just think Auburn defensively probably does a lot of the same things that we saw from a Tennessee or a Texas AM that can really just hold the South Carolina team down. Because as we said, I mean, South Carolina is – their best player is still Gigi Jackson, in my opinion. It may not – you know, consistently is he going to just go out and be able to just put up monster numbers against everybody, knowing that he's the guy everybody's game planning for? No. But everything still depends on him, you know, and I just feel like that they need more help around him, and I just – consistently that you don't have that right now on the offensive end. Um, so, so yeah, I just, Auburn's the pick here and I just think they're going to be able to do too many things defensively to really cause some issues for, for the South Carolina team. I, I don't, I mean, like all these other games, you know, I, all these other South Carolina games against teams like Tennessee, Texas, a will this be close? I, maybe if Auburn just, you know, as I said before, gets happy with shooting threes or just is not there offensively, maybe. But I, I just think defensively, there's just too much for, for South Carolina to, to have issues here with Auburn. Okay, Tennessee visits LSU, 3 Central on ESPN. Can I say the same thing I just said about the Auburn-South well, Carolina? Well, I was going to say, this is, I feel like we're talking about the same thing, except LSU's a little better in South Carolina and Tennessee's a little better than Auburn, maybe more than a little better. But in any case uh, – Tennessee about a 12.4 point road favorite according to computers with an 89% chance to win. Tennessee does struggle offensively at times. We have been over that at Knowledge, but it's also putting up a defensive season for the ages. And guess what LSU has had? Fitz scoring lately. It only seems to be getting worse at what 49 points against Auburn the other night. Really, no consistent offense other than KJ Williams, and I wonder if that is starting to affect his performance too. Just given how little help he's got, I don't, I don't see Tennessee having a lot of trouble. This one could happen, but I wouldn't predict it. Well, I mean, look, I think you start this game off by figuring out the status of Vescovy and Key. Um, yeah, that's that that's is important. a good point. But um, but you know it it didn't hurt them in Starkville. I mean it, it it made it more difficult, but they did it without them in Starkville the other night. Right, and I think it's I think it's like over the long haul though. Uh, you know that's one piece of data. I think if you add more to it, there probably are games where we know that will be a problem if you don't have those two guys. I don't know if this one's it because, like you said, LSU we we've mentioned many times they just they have so many issues scoring, and especially against good defensive teams, right? And I think that's kind of where they are right now. I mean, LSU in SEC play is what? I mean, they haven't scored over 71 points. 60, 56, 56, 66, 49. So, yeah, like offensively, as we I mean, you know, we can keep saying it. it's K.J. Williams, Adam Miller, and you really need someone else to step up. Multiple and sometimes guys. that's Trey Hannibal, but sometimes it's not. Right, and but that needs to be on an every-game basis for them to have a chance in these kind of games. And so I think best – I mean, the key one, I think, was illness, right? So, like – I don't want to play that. I mean, yeah, you would assume maybe he's got a good chance to play. Vesca be you know, we're recording this on Thursday. We don't it's know. A shoulder. But shoulder, and I think that's a little more tricky because 
because I think he's had that before. It's a yeah. He just reaggravated the yeah. the shoulder thing. I think, um, or maybe it's the same one. I'm pretty sure it was. So, um, so yeah. I mean, that one's a little tougher to predict, but I mean, you know, Chris, we've we've seen this before. Saturday games, you know, afternoon games. You know, I don't know. I mean, that these are these are always kind of tricky. I think, but. I think Tennessee is clearly the better team. And when you think about the strengths and weaknesses, right? Tennessee's strength is defense. LSU's weakness is scoring. Sometimes it's as simple as that. (laughs) And I think we kind of saw that play out in the Auburn game. You know, Alabama game was just a a different story. But I think you've seen recently LSU, you know, the weaknesses are showing – and when you have to kind of figure out just how to stop the strengths of the other teams, how do we stop Alabama from scoring? They couldn't do it. How do we stop, you know, Auburn from holding us to below 50 points? They couldn't do it. I think Tennessee's kind of a same, a same challenge, right? I mean, it's, it's very similar in that if Tennessee has some stretches offensively where they don't score, which is not out of the question, as we said, they had 10 points with five minutes left in the first half against Mississippi state, obviously had their issues against Kentucky. This could be a game, and I maybe you think it probably should be. It may, probably will be a game, but even if it's a rock fight, <laughs> I just don't know how you could pick LSU just based on the fact that Tennessee is still, despite the Kentucky game, they're still the second best team in the league, and yeah, LSU has just kind of gone in reverse and just just can't score. So, if you want to make a case for this being a game, I think you go back to the SEC opener where Tennessee struggled against an Ole Miss team that's about on the same yeah. level as LSU. Now, the makeups are different. LSU's best player is a big. Ole Miss's is probably Matt Morrell. But that was a game where I think Tennessee trailed in the second half. No, that was probably just a one-off thing. And, and the Vols have played pretty well on the road. But uh, just to point out all sides of it, there's one angle to consider. Yep. Let's move on to Alabama visiting Missouri, which I think after A&M Kentucky is the most interesting game on the slate at 5 o'clock Central SEC Network. The computers have Alabama as about a 6.9 point road favorite with Missouri having a 27% chance to win. Um, Missouri – Came out ahead in, in crunch time, uh, made the plays it needed to make. That r- arena will be lit. Alabama, I saw Alabama play in Nashville, which is where we are. I was there in person. Alabama got out 23 on Vanderbilt and didn't really close it out with authority there. Um Maybe Missouri gets Alabama's attention a little bit more. Um, I, I sense a lack of discipline with this team at times, but it's awfully talented. Um, and, and Alabama can defend, and it has length. Missouri is not a very good defensive team. It'll get some steals, and that's where Alabama, I think, at times can get a little reckless. But um, I think the difference in this one is defense. Alabama can play at an elite level. Missouri really hasn't done that. But I, I think – in Columbia, Blake, I mean, I wouldn't completely rule out the possibility of an upset either the way Missouri has played in spurts at home. No, I don't think you can rule it out um, because Missouri, as we said, if if they get going offensively, which has not been something they've done recently, um, if they get going, they can hang with anybody because we've said it. You could certainly make the argument at times these are the two best offensive teams in the SEC at their best. Um, but – Alabama presents some different challenges and um, you know, it's, it's one where I think you said exactly where I was going to go with this one is. Well, t- turnovers you, is another thing too. Missouri forces them and, and Alabama will, will make them. Well, and that's, that's kind of where I was headed is. Yeah. The thing about Missouri is they have to be forcing turnovers. Like that is something because their defense just in a, you know, in a set scenario not good is not always great so like they need this game to be where they're forcing turnovers and, and let's be honest this game's going to be like it's going to be back and forth like it's just going to be uh I, I would be shocked if this is anything but a high scoring game right like i don't know what the over under is not a professional better but i just tend to think this is a game that will get up there 
uh, based on how these two teams play. But Missouri has to force some turnovers here because, you know, and, you know, obviously we don't expect them to come out and shut down a Brandon Miller or anything like that. But if they're going to keep up with Alabama, they have to force turnovers. Another issue for Missouri, I think, is rebounding here. And this is a big, big problem, I think, against Alabama because we've seen this, right, with what Alabama can do. It's one, you know, this is where, you know, I, I don't, you kind of do have to say the word flawless. Missouri's defense almost has to be flawless against Alabama because mm-hmm. we've seen what Alabama is capable of. And to, to do that, I think it's, you have to force turnovers to get easy buckets, but you, and, and to prevent just Alabama doing their thing and slicing and sort of dicing you when it comes to how they run their offense and knowing they're going to shoot a lot of threes, right? So you have to be able to force the turnovers to not give them those easy opportunities, but you also have to rebound. And I, I think this is one, I don't know. I haven't looked at the stat, but I would assume Missouri is near the bottom in terms of allowing offensive rebounds. And I'm sure the defensive rebounding numbers aren't great either, but I just think with, with the size that Alabama has, of course, you know, whether it's Betty Ako, whether it's Miller, Clowney, Gurley, <laughs> I mean, they can get a lot of easy boards and a lot of easy points. And that's what Missouri has to prevent. They have to prevent the easy points. If they don't, I don't want to say Missouri going to get blown out of the building, but you know what, Chris, it's like Alabama done that a lot of teams, haven't they? And I, I think this is one where you worry a little bit defensively because about Missouri, because if they're not on defensively, Alabama is the kind of team that can just come out and, you know, put up 85 points or more. And, and run away with this one. So that's my own concern about the Tigers here. I'm just thinking, I don't know that you could pick a more fascinating matchup. Just pick any two teams in the league and pick a venue than this one. Because like if, if this is in Tuscaloosa, I, I, I'm not going to say it's an easy Alabama win, but it, I don't, and I think we're going to pick Alabama anyway. But here's what I'm getting at. We talked about the turnovers. And Alabama's issues with them. Alabama's 260 something in the country in turnover rate. Missouri was, I think, number one at forcing them. Uh, now it's number four. So you got bad against elite. And on the other side, guess his who is number 357 in defensive rebounding. You basically just, just said it. It's Missouri. 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 Yeah. So you you've got you've got two areas here where one team is just really bad at something. Um well, Alabama's bad at turning over. Missouri is dreadful at picking up defensive boards. And it's matched up against something that's a strength on the other side. And, and again, you, you throw it in Columbia, where that has been an electric atmosphere of late. Alabama does have lapses. I mean, it's not. The, I think the 27% upset rate that the computers have forecast is, is probably – about right. So you play this game four times. Missouri probably wins one of them. That that sounds about right to me. Yeah, I would maybe even go a little bit higher. I think that again, I think Missouri's got a chance to win this game because I think when you look at Alabama, I mean, yes, they have just been completely dominant, right? Um, in every SEC game, they've won by what is it? I don't know what their average margin of victory is, but I mean, they won by double digits in every SEC game so far. And I think when you consider that and knowing that three of those have been on the road at Mississippi state at Arkansas at Vandy, you know, it's just, it's, they're tough. I mean, I I've said it, you know, I think they're the best team in the country and I think they'd be the favorite to win it all right now. if The tournament was played right now, but I still think they are, they are not unlike a lot of other teams we've seen like this in the past where they're going to have a game somewhere where they're just yeah. not hitting shots and they do rely a lot on the three. What else do they rely on, Chris? <laughs> Getting to the free throw line. Um, like a lot of teams in the SEC, and that's something else that would worry me a little bit is, I mean, we saw the the fouls and those kind of things in the Missouri-Arkansas game, and I just, again, it all goes back to defense, right? I mean, it, it really does. Like this game, it all goes back to defense. We know at their best, these are two really good offensive teams, elite offensive teams when they are clicking. And look, Missouri's got Isaiah Mosley back. So like that adds another dynamic for them. And especially in a game like this, you you need him um, to be able to, to keep, keep pace here. 
So all that said, I, I'm going to pick Alabama. I just think it's how can you pick against this team at this point? But the atmosphere and if Missouri just comes out hitting shots early can defend at the, in all honesty, defend at the highest level they've defended at all season long, because that's what it's going to yeah. take. It's going to take their best defensive game to win this one. And again, that's probably a hard thing to bank on just because of how good Alabama has been. But you also know that I think there will be a game somewhere that Alabama just is not Alabama. And yeah, maybe this is it because Missouri does seem like the kind of team offensively that can do some things, but if they can force the turnovers defensively, they can do that as well. But I just think the consistency on the defensive end of the floor would worry you a little bit in a game like this. Well, I want to bring two more things up. Okay. Um, do we know if Noah Carter's playing from Missouri? No, and, and that's he the thing. We were recording this on Thursday. We we have no idea, so that's important. Yeah. Uh, the other thing, I wonder if Alabama is still going to have some focus issues around the Darius Miles thing. Uh, may, maybe a week of separation is, is the cure. Um, I Having seen Alabama – play in person this week I, I question how locked in that team was for 40 minutes um i still think you still could have some without elaborating anymore some distractions around that so that's just just another thing to consider you can comment on that or we can move on to florida Mississippi yeah i don't State. i don't have a clue so yeah i mean i again yeah. i i think we we talked about it with the vanderbilt game at this rate at this point i who knows so yeah. Uh, final game, 7.30 tip-off SEC Network. Florida goes to Starkville to play Mississippi State. Uh, the computers have State as about a 1.8 point home court favorite with a 59% chance of winning. These are teams that both struggle to score mightily. State is a, an abysmal foul shooting team. Tolu Smith sometimes uh, can literally miss double-digit free throws in a game. Uh, Florida has struggled outside of Colin Castleton at times. Sometimes they will have other guys step up. Sometimes they won't. But, boy, he has been good late. Um, very, very similar teams in some aspects here, Blake. Yeah, I think this is a – to me, this feels a lot like an A&M Florida repeat here. Um, yeah. Maybe not to that level, but uh, I think there's a lot. A and offense is much better than states, but yeah, yeah. But I, I just, I still think though, it's they they weren't against Florida, um, no. And so I think that's that's the issue. Is I just I feel like this is going to be a pretty low scoring game, and I'd be surprised otherwise, just based on as we said how Mississippi State's playing offensively. Which when you look at the numbers, it is just. I mean, I, I want to feel like I wasn't joking when I said I thought they could be the worst shooting team in the SEC, but I don't know that I thought it would be like this. Um, I mean, the glaring numbers, like their three-point percentage is just 28.7%, 47.4% from two. That's from two. 61% mm -hmm. from the free throw line. I mean, it's just – it's brutal on that side of the floor. But you also have to remember they have played the toughest schedule to this point of anybody in the league probably. So – they played some good defensive teams too, and playing Tennessee twice doesn't help. So um, that that doesn't help your numbers at all. But you know, Florida's a team, as we, we mentioned, they've gotten it on track defensively too, right? Remember the games back in the where they're giving up 90 to Xavier and 84 to West Virginia and UConn's blowing them out. But even in some of the games they've lost, right? I mean, they've played good defense. And I think that's why, you know, this game will be a rock fight because I think it's how both teams have to win. To me, this is like your SEC special. And the SEC special, I mean... Fouls? <laughs> Fouls. <laughs> Price of free throws being shot in this one. But I also think it's... Lots that's of three-point misses. Well, that may be the case, too. I mean, the SEC special can go in a lot of different ways. But I also think it's, when in doubt, pick the home team. Like, I think that's that's also the SEC special that we tend to go with. And I think that's probably what I do here. I mean, look, Mississippi State's 1-5 and five in the league. They got these. I mean, they got to win these kind of games, you know, to to try to get back on track to get in the tournament conversation again. I think this is one they absolutely have to have. But you know what? You can say the same thing kind of about Florida now. They're in a mode, and we talked about this before. Florida's schedule 
does not allow a lot of opportunities to build a convincing NCAA tournament resume yeah. because their, their schedule is not, you know, it's like, because they don't, they don't play Tennessee twice. Um, they don't play Alabama twice. They don't play Auburn twice. So, you know what I mean? If we said, we think those are the three top teams without question. They don't play any of those teams twice. So you don't get those extra opportunities. And so these are the kind of games that do absolutely nothing for you from a win standpoint, but they can hurt you from a loss standpoint. And I don't say them do nothing for you, but they give you another win. But yeah, I, I think that's kind of what Florida's running into. And so mm, I think this is a really close game, but I, I'm going to again go back to the SEC formula here and I'll pick the home team in a, a close one. But I think this is your, your rock fight of the day. If, if not, maybe Tennessee, LSU. So, all right, we preview every single game involving conference play in the SEC. We recap every single game involving SEC teams in conference play. We're going to have baseball coming. We're kicking out a lot of football content right now. Best way to get all that, hit the like button. That helps us out, helps us get noticed, and, and hit the subscribe button so you don't miss anything. If you want to enable notifications, we have been known to do some impromptu live streams around SEC basketball. If there's an interesting outcome, uh, we did one a couple of weeks ago when South Carolina pulled an upset in Lexington. So you, you never know. It depends on our schedule. depends on the interest of the games. But anyway, make sure you catch all our content by hitting that subscribe button. He's Blake Lovell. I'm Chris Lee. We are Southeastern 14, and we will see you again soon.